Selamat datang ke Malaysia. Hari yang ke-155. Kami selamat melangkah masuk. Don't cry, Abi. You know, after going through the sacrifice, the challenge, you know, it's hard work. But when you achieve, it's not about how other people see you as doing something extraordinary or as a hero. But at the end of the day, to me, it's, it's an achievement, you know, self-achievement, being able to actually get through so many things. At the time, I'm probably not so sure how I feel. Some part of me probably broken. <laughs> traumatized you know but then i don't think at the time i'd be able to actually going deep into it because you know with the arrival we have all the medias family members waiting you know lots of events for me like a mixed feeling even sometimes in my is that i'm dreaming because imagine uh, after driving, whether it's that I'm on the real life now, uh, reaching um, nation. Now you can see the emotion from the children. They couldn't say anything. I think at that time they are holding tear of joy. Definitely for me, I was very relieved. I think one of the things which I remember is when we were driving from Thailand to Malaysia both sides of the family my dad's side and my mum's side were all waiting for us at the finish line basically and i've never seen both sides of my family like my dad's side and my mum's side all together and to see everyone there just cheering us on and they they were wearing shirts which they had printed out like they had like barry to Malaysia on it um just seeing everyone there it was it was an amazing feeling is a nature that, that we humans sometimes did not realise that we need it. You know, we always think that, you know, uh, it's a hardship that we did not want to go through, but we did not. And sometimes we try to find something to satisfy ourselves, right? But we didn't understand that through sacrifice that what gives us satisfaction. Tapi akhir sekali kita nampak dalam bila kita berjalan, walaupun ini projek keluarga biasa, orang kampung punya projek, Tapi bila dah sampai sini, dah jadi projek orang satu Malaysia pula. Bukan satu Malaysia, satu dunia. Kalau tengok dalam Facebook, ada berapa? Daripada Middle East, daripada US. Waktu kami kekurangan belanja dulu, bukan saja orang Malaysia, orang-orang daripada US, daripada England, daripada mana bagi duit pula. Orang daripada Singapore masuk duit, apa ni? Dalam perjalanan. Dan projek ni jadi dah sekarang ni jadi projek untuk semua orang. Semua orang semua orang bagi nasib, bagi semangat. Bila kita jalan ni memang pressure. Tapi bila orang lain semua bagi semangat, teruskan, teruskan, teruskan. Alhamdulillah hari ni 155 hari. Ha, 155 hari negara yang ke-27. Sampai juga ke Sami ke sini. Sebab kereta ni dah 160,000 km. Dia punya mileage. Dan ini satu pelajaran bagi kita. Ha, terutama bagi kita orang Islam. Allah sentiasa akan tolong kita. Ha, selagi kita bergantung pada Allah, nusrah Allah akan bersama dengan Allah. Ha, ini bukan bila kami buat projek ini bukan yang kawan-kawan kami di pertama orang Islam di UK, orang saudara-saudara baru di Europe. Dia pun dapat belajar. Ha, this is memang real. Ha, nusrah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ni ada di mana-mana. Jadi ini memang satu pelajaran pada kita. Ada orang yang tengok mungkin juga apa ni. Bila kita ada hubungan dengan Allah Subhanahu Taala tak ada masalah. Walaupun kami tak ada apa-apa, tetapi boleh sampai projek macam ni dengan jauh, belanja kurang, dengan cuaca yang cukup apa ni. Sampai bayangkan minyak diesel pun sampai boleh buku, oksigen pun kurang. Tapi Alhamdulillah kami selamat sampai ke sini. If someone with a degree, you know, and in a few years, it's like, would you rather like, okay, talk about your degree or about like 27 countries you can't travel to? Like what's, I think it's the experience it, it, it itself is like learning, you're learning new cultures, you're learning like geography, you're learning. You learn things. much more yeah. than you can. So that you're not, yeah, and it's like real life experience, you know yeah. what's happening and stuff like that. 
like on the news it's just constant negative things like this country hates this country this country hates this country and then you go out there and you're like well it's not always like that like nice things There's lots exist of positives yeah and you wouldn't know that unless you experience it so i feel like traveling in itself is like learning for me also the target that when i brought up the kids that it's not for them to be someone well known or doing a sort of dinner it's not but it's them to grow up to be someone who can inspire others to do you know to do other good things 14 hari bulan Disember Alhamdulillah kami sampai ke tempat kami bermula tempat kami bertemu keluarga kami bertemu jadi satu keluarga dan kami balik semula ke Citra mileage sekarang menunjukkan 163,756 163,756 ribu batu telah melalui 26 negara dan Malaysia adalah negara yang ke-27 hari 100 yang ke-155 Alhamdulillah kami sampai dengan selamat setelah melalui beberapa cabaran menempuhi berbagai bentuk muka bumi dengan cuaca kepanasan yang berbeza daripada suhu di bawah paras beku sehingga ke 50 darjah celsius hari ini kami sampai ke Jitra Okey, Jamal Lulai. Okey, uh, Adik uh, Cik Jamal uh, kira hari ni. Okey, cuba cerita hari ni. Macam mana boleh sampai dekat sini? Uh, daripada mana? Uh, hari ni hari yang ke-155. Kami bertolak empat orang orang tahun ni. Mm -hmm. Dan hari ni genaplah uh, lima bulan kami uh, sampai daripada UK mm -hmm. ke, ke Malaysia. Ini negara yang ke-27. Oh, banyak negara besar tu Negara yang ke-27 Kalau tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, Nampak di motor caravan tu Di sebelah kiri, di sebelah kanan uh -huh. Ada penil uh, Malaysia Ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Penil dari Malaysia tak ada Penil dari Malaysia tak ada Jadi kita nak cari Belia-belia pokok ada penil dari Malaysia Ada stiker Oh, stiker Mungkin kami boleh tambah So ada 27 bendera kat situ ke? Macam mana? Ha, sekarang ni ada 26 26? Ha, bendera kita tak ada lagi ha, Okey jadi siapa-siapa yang ada stiker bendera Malaysia ha, Boleh lah okay. Baju tu macam mana cik? Ha, baju tu Ada adik-beradik saya Dia tengok saya kami pun dah, dah berjalan dengan 26 negara ni okay. Duit dah habis banyak ha? Dia kata main macam mana kita nak ambil duit balik okay. Kita cuba jual baju Alright itu ha, dia Baju Baju ada dua ada yang RM35, ada yang RM30. Okey, baju uh, uh, baju apa tu? Baju baju satu uh, yang ada event untuk hari ini. Alright. Uh, Dan satu lagi bahan kami. Okey. Bagi yang biasa by road to Malaysia. Okey, itu dia. Okey, promosi tuan-tuan dan puan-puan minat. Okey. Uh, boleh jumpa datang please. Okey, belilah uh, baju uh, by road to Malaysia. By road to Malaysia. Okey, dengan harga RM35. Purely project orang kampung.
I'd like to thank all the kayak uh, competitors today, the Orange Nation. And at the back we have the motocross uh, six kilometre track there, absolutely amazing on stage. I've never seen anything like these guys. What a show, what a great uh, event. Sports Rec Challenge 2013. We'd like to thank all the uh, stand holders. Don't forget you can uh, spend some money here with our uh, great uh, souvenirs. We've got the, uh, a bot shop outdoor wall. We've got JPC. We have uh, Pearl Island. If you want to check out the trip to Pearl Island adventures, we have uh, By Road to Malaysia. Yang dilakukan perjalanan oleh orang kampung ni. Okay. Okay, terima kasih. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah. And just like oh my god this life would be like so good like being able to to sort of be around so many people and all these people like who like want to hear about you and you, you feel like you know it sort of like lessens your insecurities because you feel like all oh, these people want to hear about you and stuff but there's a part of me that was like when we were experiencing it especially in Malaysia and touring around Malaysia I was like this is so much work we had a lot more things that were just like easy for us like they were just handed us like people were like um, getting us to like stay at their hotels and stuff like that, that was like crazy. But like for me it was like we had like a schedule that we had to keep up with. Like you know somebody wanted to film this with us and um, some people wanted to interview us and we had like some event that was going on. Um, and then like for me it was just like I want to be able to just like sit back and like yeah. relax a bit. But I think that you felt like with all these events and stuff that we already had planned like we, we felt like we would be disappointing a lot of people. I think that that's the aspect of maybe like, I wouldn't say necessarily celebrities, but like, like people who have like a large following that have to experience. I think that's the part that was like the most difficult for me. And I think yeah, it's like when when you sort of think about celebrities nowadays, we're definitely not on that level. Yeah, but <laughs> obviously. Not. <laughs> but but um, it's sort of we did get a taste of you know what the life's like, especially after arriving at Malaysia. There was a lot of like um, obviously a lot of the media were interested, and a lot of uh, these you know, events and programs invited us and there was a lot sort of when we arrived in Malaysia but on top of the fact that we just got like done with traveling and stuff I feel like we, while like I said before, like we were adapting to that lifestyle and we got back it's sort of, oh there's media here and then uh, and then, oh there's this event this day and there's this program this day and it's yeah. just like it was, it felt like, it felt like a bit much like overwhelming right? Yeah, yeah especially in this day and age where everyone's trying to make it and everyone's trying to become like a celebrity in some sorts and trying to find like a fast track to it. Um, I think we were lucky to, to have a sort of like taste in that and experience that. For me, it was just like, wow, like I, I think it's, it's, it's probably the same for everyone really. Like the whole business side of stuff was like the part that was just like, this is like a bit much for us like I, at such a young age too. Setelah 25,500 km, kami berjumpa satu minuman yang cukup unik hanya terdapat di utara Malaysia.
few years back before COVID, my plan is actually for the two boys to actually go backpacking in Europe on themselves. Um, you know, but, but that didn't happen. Then COVID came. It, it will be a very good experience if 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 they take that because doing research and plan for the journey is is a big lesson on its own. It is the biggest lesson for 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 the travelling in any expedition. Oh, August 2020. So at that time, I gave uh, Shamim and Saif to plan uh, everything. I just uh, stay look at that time. I just tell, I told them we plan to go camping for like uh, three nights in in Scotland in the wild, wild camping. Even uh, I have no problem to leave uh, to them. Uh, I mean, we still need to to to, to check, especially like uh, in terms of other thing, uh, the the bureaucratic, uh, but. Uh, I think we both more relaxed now. Yeah. In terms of them making decision, and then you know let, let them, and then and then you know just guide them from behind. I don't think that will be a problem anymore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Alhamdulillah hari ini hari yang ke tujuh kami di Malaysia bersama dengan hari yang ke tujuh campur lima seratus dua ratus. 162 kami di Gurun dalam perjalanan ke Perak. Ini keadaan kebis di Malaysia. Ada restoran, tempat makan, ada kedai stall yang jual alat-alat pencuri mobile phone, snack dan ada juga masjid tempat menunaikan Fardu semayang Fardu dan tak kurang juga ada servis petrol petrol station dan kami akan update dari masa ke semasa insyaAllah wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Hari ini 20 hari bulan uh, Disember 2013 kami dalam perjalanan ke Perak Darul Ridwan balik kampung. Hari hari ini uh, 12 hari bulan uh, 21 hari bulan Disember uh, 2013 kami berada di kalau tak silap, nama tempat ni Teluk Senangin Tidak jauh daripada uh, Lumot uh, Negeri Perak, Darul Rizwan uh, Sekarang pukul 8.58 pagi uh, Suhu sekitar 25 degri Celsius Tempat ni agak uh, quiet Diberdepankan dengan uh, Teluk Teluk Rubiah atau nama-nama tempat ni Teluk Senangin Dan ini adalah hotel yang kami tinggal uh, Malam tadi Harga biasa untuk standard room uh, RM120 Tapi bila cuti sekolah uh, Campur RM30 Jadi RM150 untuk standard room uh, Superior RM150 uh, dan masih hotel ni masih bau uh, very clean uh, tapi tak ada kemudahan-kemudahan lain macam wifi tak ada uh, included breakfast uh, kita sambung lagi uh, dalam video yang akan datang uh, dining hall Tengok apa yang ada makan pagi hari ini. Ah, nasi goreng. Nasi goreng. Kuih tiaw goreng. Dan yang buat telur. Dan yang lain serial. Uh, hari yang ke-8 kami di Malaysia. Uh, kami bermalam di Yop Bay Hotel. Uh, di Teluk Senangin kalau tak silap di negeri Perak Darul Ridwan ini keadaan hotel ada lebih kurang 50 bilik masih baru 
dan harga di sekitar 120 hingga ke 200 mengikut musim dan bilik. InsyaAllah kita berjumpa lagi dalam video-video yang akan datang. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Why couldn't you take back the motor vehicle? We, we plan to drive back. Uh, even the plan was uh, uh, 2020. One of the guys like to sponsor this journey. He said, why not we travel from 2nd of February 2020. So they can say 0 to 0 to 0 to 0. But uh, suddenly Corona came. I think that's make us impossible. Yeah. And it's quite expensive to actually shoot that back yeah. at the moment, so... Alhamdulillah, hari yang ke-162. Kami selamat sampai ke kampung kelahiran the driver by road to Malaysia di kampung uh, Sungai Kelih Hutan Melintang, Perak. Hari yang ke-162 uh, Masuk ke kampung Ini kampung Pulau-Pulau Dan Sejauh Kampung ni ada tiga kampung je Dalam kawasan ini Kampung Pulau-Pulau Kampung Sungai Kelim Dan kampung Kampung Kota Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan tengok kat sini Orang siap pun sambut juga Dan di ni kampung kelahiran saya Kampung Sengai Keli Dan Hari ni Untuk makluman tuan-tuan dan puan-puan adalah Hari yang ke-162 Perjalanan kami daripada United Kingdom uh, Ramai enam orang Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan dah tahu Ada yang Anak kami yang yang sunung di sana Puteri Sabira Lepas itu Muhammad Syamim uh, uh, Sumrah Dan Ahmad Syed Dan isteri saya Sofini Harun Kami berenang-beranak Orang kampung, orang orang biasa saja Bukan orang special Orang yang tak ada duit Orang yang mencebak sawit Orang yang mencari koko Alhamdulillah ni dapat sampai di kampung ni semula Kampung ni kami datang Alhamdulillah kampung ni kami sampai Allahumma barik lana fiha Allahumma barik lana fiha Allahumma barik lana fiha Allahumma rzukna janaha Wa habibna ila ahliha Wa habib salihi ahliha ilaina Hari yang ke-162 uh, Kami sampai ke kampung kelahiran Di kampung Sungai Kili Kita melintang Perak Alhamdulillah kita akan sambung lagi dalam video-video yang akan datang. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Were you glad that Jamal convinced you to do this? To be honest, being me, I don't think anybody can convince me. I, I will do things, I feel like I'm ready to do it. Even if now he keeps saying he's going to travel, I don't think that I'll be ready to take that. So, <laughs> that's yes. not going to happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, because there are lots of things behind things. Behind the scenes is, 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 is not easy. After Barrett to Malaysia, after, after we arrived, I don't know, it was to me, I don't know about him, but to me it was, you know, it's a big satisfaction, it's a big staff achievement to me, regardless whatever people are going to see me, you know. Um, I didn't feel extraordinary. I'm not sure whether this is right or wrong, but I feel after this journey, this journey really give uh, make me stronger. Uh, for example, like when after we came back here, 2014, 2015, we went to refugee camp. 2015, 2016. Yeah, 2015, we went there in October and we stayed there. The intention at the beginning, we planned to stay for three days. But eventually, they, we prolong our time, become 13 months. 
And many people ask, what makes you, my family and me, can stay in the refugee camp where there is no clean water, there is no proper place to stay, uh, the weather is harsh, uh, and people have a, people said no law. In, you know, in the refugee camp, there are so many people. But when I look back, I think probably this is the benefit of our journey, our by road to Malaysia journey, make us uh, stronger, and which we kept we capable to stay in even in that situation where people say jungle. Yeah, this is only only animal, only this is no human can stay there. But Alhamdulillah, uh, my family and me stay there for 13 months. And not only the, because from the journey we learn so many things. Uh, we learn about humanity and uh, one thing. Uh, that's why our project when in that refugee camp, uh, we try to provide meal, hot meal. And Alhamdulillah for the 13 months we provide every day 1500 meals every day uh, to the people in the camp. And this of course a bit of contribution from our journey. Uh, make us uh, stronger uh, to do all this thing, pro uh, this project. Yeah, di antara special di Perak ada pesta makan durian uh, di sekitar uh, bulan bulan Disember, awal Disember setiap tahun. Ini rupa bentuk dalam uh, durian yang kaya dengan uh, protein. Oh, today we are all going to sell some trucks. Uh, it's been a pretty hard day so far. But when we came back and we stay in the refugee camp in Kale Jungle, he was uh, only 13 years old. So at that time, he stayed with us, helping uh, Sofini cooking in, in, in the jungle, in the kitchen. Imagine the amount he cooked is not for 100 people, for 1,500 people every day. It's not only one day, once a week, but this is every day. And even from my heart, I feel guilty because most of parents nowadays, they are very happy if they, their children go to a top university or study in a boarding school, a grammar school. Or some people, they are very happy if their children can stay in madrasa, do Islamic study. But for me, uh, I only bring him to stay in the refugee camp. And he never complained. He loved to do that job, uh, cooking for, for people. I think this is also another uh, benefit from uh, travel overland. You know, and, and of course when you arrive, I mean for the first time, you're facing the public, not just the media, but the public. And then we sort of um, join the exhibition, you know, like if they have a, an event, so we join the event. We, we wanted to actually go out there, right? And, 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 and tell people and then, you know, share our experience. And then sometimes some public will come out like, oh, this is not true. There's no way they, they'll be able to travel across. They probably bring this with a, you know, with a shipment. So all these sort of things that, that you learn along the way when you face the media, you face the public you know, the public reaction, things like that. But Alhamdulillah, we never actually get, a, you know, a negative feedback. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil karim. Hari ini tiga hari bulan uh, Januari uh, 2014, minggu yang ketiga kami di Malaysia. 
Kami berada di uh, Sanglang, Kuala Sanglang. Uh, ini di bahagian Perlis. Kuala Sanglang ada dua, Kuala Sanglang Perlis dan Kuala Sanglang Kedah. Uh, kami berada di Taman Nipah Enterprise. Uh, walaupun saya lahir di hampiran dengan Sungai Bernam, banyak pokok-pokok nipah. Tapi keunikan di tempat sini, pokok nipah ditanam. Dan daripada uh, kawasan ini, uh, hasil tuayan dia ialah air nira nipah yang rasa dia cukup special. Dan kita akan sambung lagi dengan catatan video-video yang akan datang. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi What would you do differently for next time, if there is a next time? I think uh, I will get uh, like a different type of vehicle, uh, more like suitable for overland expedition, more preparations, uh, more training, and also we like to invite other people to, if not join participate to travel together, we participate in in term of other thing. Because along the journey, so many things we can do, uh, especially for vehicle development. The One of the most acquired, expensive thing to do is a field test to run the vehicle in the real uh, situation. And this is an opportunity uh, to, to, to do when we travel. I think that's another thing I, if I do again in, in future. I don't think I have that much different that I will do, to be honest. Of course, the differences that I have now in terms of social media, yeah, filming side of things, uh, so we'll be able to share better. That, that probably um, I, I would like to improve. I want to spend more time. Uh, for example, summer place, we have limited time. We just only stay like one night, which we couldn't meet local people. If we want, if we want to do the next time, it, it'll probably be more about the journey than the destination. Jadi, selalunya kalau mungkin uh, ceramah Maulid Rasul, uh, bahasanya tahun-tahun yang lepas, tuan-tuan akan panggil orang yang alim, orang yang arif tentang Al-Quran, orang yang arif tentang hadis. Tapi mungkin tahun yang agak berbeza sikit. Uh, Tuan pengurusi kita jemput saya ni Orang biasa je orang kampung je Tapi untuk berkongsi pengalaman Tak tahu mungkin orang perak ni Dia selalu membara Mana-mana kami jumpa, kami jumpa orang perak Tapi kali ini Yang kami buat ni mungkin agak berbeza Sedikit Seramai enam orang Kami membara daripada United Kingdom ke Malaysia Kita mulakan pengembaraan daripada 13 hari bulan Julai Dan Alhamdulillah Mungkin asbab doa daripada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan Kami selamat sampai di Bukit Kawita Pada 2014 uh, Disember Lebih kurang dalam 3 minggu lepas Alhamdulillah Tak ada masalah langsung Kami selamat sampai Semua sehat do you know, my parents, if they hadn't taken us then and there when we were homeschooled, like, when else were they going to, you know, like, I was, like, 17, you know, in a few years, like, I was working a full-time job. There was, like, no other time where they could have really took us. Because, and as well, like, people get so busy, you know, like, when you say, like, oh, okay, just leave your job and just travel, you know, you're quite hesitant. You're like, oh, well, no, like, you have to stop thinking about, like, oh, you need to save up, like, this much. I think you should have some money but it's ridiculous how welcoming people are that I bet like in every country you go to, there's going to be someone that's going to offer you food, somewhere a place to stay. And that's why I think like, I'd go backpacking. I, I just want to, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just like so excited to even think about it. And I just want to go everywhere. If, if someone said to me tomorrow, like, do you want to go do this right now? I'd be like, yeah, let's go right now. <laughs> if it was as easy, as like driving to France, I just do it, and I think like one day I will do it. Pengalaman sebagai satu orang ibu dan isteri ini kita kata banyak mana mana yang kita tengok untuk jalan ini dari segi psikologi anak-anak, dari segi makanan, kemana kita nak beli halal food, 
Berapa hari makan yang kita tahan uh, Air Sebab Dia kata banyak ni kalau dalam rumah tu pun Biasanya orang lelaki dia, dia, dia tak ambil perihal sangat kan Maknanya banyak benda-benda ni dia tinggalkan pada isteri Jadi bila kita berjalan Dengan anak-anak Satu tempat ke satu tempat Maka Banyaklah benda-benda yang yang nampak dalam meeting ni Tapi Kita kata banyaklah benda yang kecil-kecil To me it was a whole new experience. Um, I think like I mentioned um, on the first, I had, I had a lot of anxieties um, talking in the public. Um, I hate that, but I think I will have to learn how to. Um, so me, myself personally, um, I don't think it's a pressure because one of the things that when I did the journey, personally, is for me to be able to inspire others and for me to be able to share the experience. This time, after years back, you know, everything has recovered to me. So we'll be able to talk deep into it. But at the time, you know, you know that's not going to be the case, especially when we arrive. So it will be a good story. I have to learn a lot in terms of what I'm going to put out in the media. You know, how you're going to say it to the media, because this goes on the public. Public can just it's not that you're scared of the public judgment, but you, you, can, you do not want to put it the wrong ways. Mm. You know, one, one sentence can, can turn into a thousand. Thinking back now, do you think you made the best decision for your children going on this journey? Um, yes and no. I don't know how much, you know, your question with the kids, but the kids has a traumatized as well in some part of the area. And I think Maybe the thing that he didn't realise that what he... I don't know how to say it, but I think what me and the kids feel during the journey, he feel like the journey is him. We did not feel appreciated that we have made a sacrifice and... But, well, I mean, of course, deep down, you know, I know that, you know, how much he loves us as a family, but um, maybe he did not know how to. <laughs> Or, or he just quite full of himself that um, you know make us feel like like we are you know we part of the journey but we are not part of the journey. Um, I think that's why kids always not want to talk about it. Um, you know, it's a learning session. Yeah, I think I, that I remember when one time I asked uh, Shamim that's a few months ago. Just on the way to masjid, I asked him, uh, Shamim, please tell me from your heart whether you really get benefit from the journey. What do you think about the journey? And he said, uh, he said he remember when he was at college, when his friend always said uh, something, which is a small, facing with any difficulties. The friend always like a give up, uh, tend to commit suicide. But for him, that's nothing. So he see this, uh, Shamem also see, I think all these things is because he already faced so many challenges along the journey. And the journey make him stronger uh, to face. Because of course, especially this day, there are so many challenges in, in the life. But if you don't have uh, the, that kind of strength, now you can hear so many things happen, uh, especially to young people nowadays. Of course, that, that, that is one of the reasons that, you know, when I agree to him, that is one of the reasons that I wanted the kids, in a way, to do the journey. Because then, to go through the hardship, that will change, you know, anybody. And sometimes we need, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of hardship where we live. So we'll have to create something to force ourselves. Gua Batu Kapur di Ipoh. Hari bulan Januari 2014, kami menerima undangan daripada orang kampung seni di Ipoh Perak Darul Rizwan. Ini masakan uh, kampung dengan ikan goreng dia, sambal pun sambal macam. Dan kita akan bersama dengan Dr. Jamalai Ismail dan keluarganya telah bersama dengan kita pada petang ini di Konti. 
Ah, jadi saya ucapkan Assalamualaikum semua. Ah, Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Itu dia ah, doktor ah, bersama dengan keluarganya datang bersama ah, dan ini merupakan salah satu destinasi ya yeah. pemeraan ah, road trip daripada UK ke Malaysia ya. Kami ni orang kampung ya. Uh-huh. Kami memang orang Perak Pia. <laughs> ah, orang kampung Sungai Kelih, Tanah Lentang Perak. Ah, kami satu keluarga enam orang. Ah, saya, ah, isteri saya, Uh, isteri saya Sofi ni, uh, Sofi ni ber, dia lahir di Sarawak, tapi kedua ibu bapa dia daripada Perlis Indra Kayangan. Uh, dan anak kami empat orang, anak yang pertama Sabira, uh, Sabira 17 tahun, puteri Sabira. Uh, yang kedua Muhammad Syamim, uh, Muhammad Syamim uh, 16, uh, lepas itu Sumra dan yang keempat Ahmad Saif. Uh, Enam kami ni. Berenam daripada United Kingdom ke Malaysia ya. Yeah. Uh, jadi uh, kalau lebih elok saya panggil uh, Dr. Jamulai ni sebagai apa? Uh, panggil Jamal. Panggil Jamal. Uh-huh. Ya. Okey, jadi Encik Jamal, uh, boleh ceritakan sikit bagaimana boleh terfikir untuk melakukan pengembaraan ni? Oh, ini soalan bagus ni. <laughs> <laughs> Tapi memang kami yang anak buah anak memang ini hasrat kami uh-huh. uh, untuk mengembara. Semua orang tahu hari ini uh, mengembara merupakan uh, satu universiti yang terbaik. Uh, sebelum ni kita nampak uh, kalau rata-rata dalam perjalanan kami ni kita nampak orang-orang yang mengembara ni uh, tak nampak lagi orang Malaysia yang bawa anak berjalan. Kalau dia bercuti pun uh, mungkin ber- berbulan madu, dua orang saja. Tapi hari ini jarang kita nampak orang dengan anak dia dengan keluarga dia bercuti. Kami tertanya-tanya, ini sebab apa ni? Jadi mungkin masalah ke? Dan inilah antara ujian yang untuk kami hadapi sepanjang perjalanan ini dengan keluarga kami mengembara. I think the disadvantage that 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 the kids has um, is not just the kids, even though us. You know when you go through hardship that challenge you psychologically mentally uh, after the achievement and then life just becomes so easy right um, and then anything that come become no fun anymore so that's what we feel as well after that and the kids were were saying that umi it, it doesn't really matter what life throw at us at the moment nothing exciting anymore you know um, you know in, in some way so that of course the life experience will make anybody stronger after that and that's one of the reason to me that you know that I, I, I you know I open up to actually bringing the kids to do that um, you know I, I don't think I mean as much as what have happened the feeling and things like that but of course you know the, the benefit of, of the traveling you cannot beat them anywhere the experience that you know the, the experience that, that, that you're having um, you know that that you be able to achieve and use um, in the future life uh, yeah i think this is also as uh, every time when people ask uh, i always encourage people uh, to bring their children together to travel uh, not like what we are done like 155 days but at least we have a time together uh, travel with uh, their, with uh, children uh, together People always say that to travel alone is easy because you can do whatever you want to do, you can stay. But when you travel with the children, this is so many challenge. Because of four children, from even from the same parent, they have a four different character, four different behavior. And to go along is not one day, this is 155 days. But Alhamdulillah, uh, even those with the so many weakness, Alhamdulillah, we 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 made it we reached malaysia after 155 days so if i'm ordinary people can do uh, so of course so many people can do this thing it's nothing impossible but uh, provided like i said that uh, the journey itself uh, one we the most important is the preparation and the planning that's i'm uh, agree when people said if we fail to plan That is mean we plan to fail. So the, the preparation is important. 
although we are we have nothing we have we just just blindly go a travel without a preparation we need to prepare we need to learn we need to have a, a, a training before our journey Cik Jamal mengadakan uh, pengembaraan bersama keluarga bagikan untuk uh, menimba satu pengalaman baru mendengar bahasa-bahasa yang berbeza makanan yang berbeza uh, cuaca yang berbeza pemandangan pemandangan yang berbeza uh, dan memang betul benda ni setiap contohnya setiap 100 km bila kita berjalan kita akan nampak benda satu benda yang lain yang berbeza pemandangan yang berbeza did you feel satisfied? Did you feel like your dream? Okay, I've accomplished my dream. Yeah, uh, not hundred percent satisfied because uh, at that time I'm thinking I need to do another journey because I need to overcome what uh, whatever my weakness along the journey, especially in terms of uh, vehicle uh, preparation. Uh, even until now, I'm still thinking whether I can continue uh, my journey one day. But when you come back to UK, of course, uh, most of the time just uh, busy to pay bill, monthly bill every day, uh, house rent, everything. But if I got opportunity, inshallah, uh, I will do again. The biggest journey is learning about ourselves yeah. throughout that journey. And the family. And yeah, and it's. Um, we didn't become some next level people like traveling the world, like we're still the same people as we were. But obviously you, you learn things here and there from different people, like traveling around inevitably. But definitely the biggest training was just sort of learning about ourselves and that was the best part of it to be honest. Yeah. And I think after that, we felt like we could overcome anything. Um, we felt like we were on top of the world. It's like as a family, we, 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 we traveled all this way and uh, Experiencing everything for ourselves was like the number one thing because like as I've mentioned like we had a lot of things where we sort of had like outside opinions of it uh, and we learned that there are more good people out there than there are bad um, and there is more good things about all these countries than there is bad so like that's the kind of experience that you can't just you can't just make an assumption about and feel like you understand you have to go to like through that yourself and learn that the world is yeah. far more of a better There's, place than we than than you know a lot of what we think it is. Yeah, it's like some. It's like going to all these places. There's things you. There's things you will not learn through a textbook. It's like you can read something, but you won't fully understand it and comprehend it until you experience it yourself. So I mean, like it's like it's like patience and life lessons. Like you don't learn that in textbook. Yeah. You learn that going through it itself, yeah. and um, that that was the best part of the journey. Just you know, uh, experiencing the yeah. Our, our van yeah is in Malaysia at the moment. Remember before we plan to ship back to UK. Hopefully we can drive to whether to African continent. But I think when we get the quotation, the price is uh, quiet. We, we can't afford to pay. I think at that time around when we got quotation around five thousand US dollar to ship mm, back yeah. uh, from uh, from Malaysia to UK. So uh, it's not worth for us to bring uh, things uh, at the moment. Yeah. Maybe in, in future, I don't know. nobody I mean, knows. We, we were thinking, like, it was quite good if we can bring it back, but yeah.